Hey everybody, it's Ben here, and I recently got a great deal on a Chevy Volt, but the reason why is because the passenger side was damaged. So I removed the original doors, I pulled a couple of doors from a parts car, and installed them in this car. I even pulled out some of the dents, and overall I had a pretty good looking, cheap, used eco car. There was only one problem, I had an error up on the display, I had the airbag uh, message here. And of course, none of the airbags had been fired off, but for safety's sake, I wanted to figure out why I was getting this error and correct it. And on a somewhat related topic, my car has the top level trim, so it actually has nicer speakers built into the doors than were in the parts car. So since I had the old crunched up door here, I thought I'd pull the speaker out of it, partly because I thought I could also find the impact sensor in the door that's part of the airbag system. Sure enough, there's the airbag impact sensor right down there, and I was able to reach in and unplug it from the wiring harness. But what was kind of weird is it looks like it was held in from one screw, but this is the tip of the screw. Uh, it looks like it was screwed in from the other side, like before the door was put together. Weird. So I thought, what the heck, the door's already wrecked. Why don't I just flip it over, I'll drill some holes, and see what that fastener looks like from the other side. Just drilled a bunch of holes and then I pried on them with my bar to pop the sheet metal open and take a look inside. When I had done that I could actually see the screw, it didn't look like anything fancy, just a tack head screw. But when I tried unscrewing it I couldn't get enough bite. Uh, it was either really heavily torqued down or maybe it had uh, some heavy duty Loctite but I could not get it open from this side. After digging around on a couple of web forums, I found out that this really is an intentionally backward screw, but that's also why the tip is shaped the way it is. It's so that you can use an external Torx socket on it. I didn't think of this because I had never even heard of eTorx, and I've definitely never used one, but now I know, so if I need to remove one of these, I'd be able to. Of course, I did not have one of those tools handy. I had my trim removal tools handy, and since I had the wrecked interior panel from the back door, I looked on there so I would know uh, pretty much about where I would need to pry, and then I used the tools to pry at those points on my nicer front door. I also knew I had to uh, remove a couple of screws at the release and also at the door handle here. Once I had those pulled off, I simply pried up on that interior panel with my tools to get that loose. And then I flipped it up, propped it up so that I could disconnect the wiring harness for the power windows and power locks control. I also needed to unhook the release cable from the door latch. So getting this off really wasn't that difficult. Um, it's in pretty good condition. Uh, it's the black with the silver so it matches the passenger front door so I could swap out the green. Uh, for this one and at least both the front doors would look the same on the inside um, Also, there's some kind of sound dampening material in here. This just stays right with the panel So this looks like this is good and I can just swap it out if I want. I unscrewed the speaker screw Pulled it out and gently pried up on the top of the speaker Then lifted that there's also catches on the bottom you have to pull out from and then on the electrical connection here, there's a little tab you have to pull out first and then squeeze where the tab was to unhook it. Then I needed to remove these screws where the door handle went over the rubbery sound dampening material. With that out of the way, I could gently lift the sound dampening material and get a view into the interior of the door, including finding that impact sensor. So a couple of things. One is keep in mind that uh, the window was rolled down just kind of made it easier to handle. Um, but of course now that glass is kind of in the way of a few things. So here's our uh, electric motor to run the window up and down. In the back door, all this, all this here, this was all broken. None of that was working right. But if we look down here, that is the airbag sensor. Um, but again, that screw there is like backwards. 
and I still didn't have the right tool to remove it anyways. But on one of the web forums, I did learn about something called the seatbelt pretensioner. Now keep in mind that I removed the seat that was in this car because it was damaged. It was all chewed up by the previous owner's dog and the heated seat didn't work. So I pulled a replacement piece from the parts car, but the parts car was also crashed. I didn't think anything of this though because uh, the nice seat in there, the airbag had not gone off, but there's a separate part in there called the seatbelt pretensioner. So I went to take a look at this part on the original seat so I could compare it to the one on the replacement seat. I already removed the little plastic cover so we can see here um, we've got this tube. So what I'm going to do is just remove this, disconnect it, and put it on the seat that's in the car. Uh, right here that's that same big torque bit, bit that's a 50 just like we used to uh, take the seat off the floor of the car. So I'll put this part on the other seat. I pulled the matching device off of the green seat that was in the car and put them next to each other to compare the two. Sure enough, they were definitely different. Uh, apparently the way that this uh, seatbelt pretensioner works is if you're in a collision, it sort of cinches down the seat belt to hold you in place, keep you safe. It's also a one-time use device. Uh, it sort of fires off kind of like an airbag. And you can tell the difference here that uh, kind of the part where the seatbelt would attach, it's shorter and out the opposite end, that little piece of steel cable sticks out the tip. So it's a telltale sign of the difference between the two. So I took the good seatbelt pretensioner and then went and installed it on the seat that I would be using in the car. After that, I got the seat in position, plugged in the wire harness, and mounted the seat down. Close the door. Let's hit the power. No vehicle messages. Everything works. Woo, no, no check engine light or anything like that. Looks like I do not have to mess with impact sensors on the door. Woohoo! I also didn't need to fool around with the airbag computer or clear any codes from it. So even though I didn't have to do anything with these impact sensors, it was kind of neat to learn about those. And I wanted to get into the doors to get those, uh, the premium sound system, Bose speakers out anyways, so I can get these transferred over to the new doors in the car. And then of course, beyond that, I got to learn about these uh, seatbelt pretensioners, which is something I didn't know a thing about before either. So uh, once again, I kind of did things myself, got to learn a bit and fix it instead of having to pay somebody else to do it for me. I still need to decide if I want to go with the black and silver interior of the car or with the black and green components from the parts car. So please let me know your opinion, uh, which you think would look better. So I hope you like these videos. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Check us out over at 300mpg.org. And until next time, stay charged up. 